In this video I show you how I made this year's Christmas present for my sister, which already is inside here. So we have to go back in time about two weeks to have a look at how I made it. Let's go! So I wanted to make a bowl that had segmented rings of this colored plywood, which is called spectral plywood. And for this bowl I wanted to use this green and brown one. The raw stock doesn't come really consistent, so at first I cut it to an equal thickness. Next I reset them into two pieces of different thickness because I wanted to make two rings. Okay, so these thin ones are going to be a 12 segmented ring and the thicker ones a 9 segmented ring. Because this is a precious and quite expensive material I wanted to get the most use out of it. So I first had to calculate the best size for the segments and that's what I did here. The individual pieces are about 28 centimeters long and considering the curve of the saw blade that I will use I will have about 25 centimeters of usable area and that's the measurement I calculated with. I won't explain the whole math in detail because that would take too long. It's not that difficult and if you're interested in it you can pause the video right now and have a better look at this sheet here. And if you ever asked yourself in school do I ever need this shitty math again in my life? Well. There you have it. The two important measurements for now are the maximum inner radius for the 12 segmented ring and for the 9 segmented ring, which are about 10 centimeters. So now knowing that, I can go to my bowl storage shelf and have a look for a suitable bowl. The most suitable bowl I could find is this walnut bowl here, which I turned in June. So I don't know if it's already dry enough. If it's not, this one would be the alternative which I turned in January. The first thing I have to do now is to get the bowl round again because it deformed during drying. The tenon on which the chuck is attached to also got deformed and doesn't fit perfectly anymore. So I had to make rather light cuts at first. So once it was round enough I mounted it the other way and trued up the tenon again. From there on the chuck won't be removed until the bowl is finished. I turned down quite a bit of this bowl and now have a outer diameter of about 23 and a half and a inner diameter of about 18 and a half centimeters. To be on the safe side I'm going to make the rings a little bit smaller so that they have a little bit of overhang to the inside of the bowl. So I think I go with a diameter of about 18 centimeters or a radius of 9 centimeters. And if we take a look at my earlier calculations again we can see that 9 centimeters are smaller than the maximum inner diameter so everything should work. Now knowing that I want to make rings with a inner radius of 9 centimeters I now need to calculate this distance of the segments. And there's a pretty simple formula for that and if I put in all the numbers I get 4.6 cm for the 12 segmented ring and 6.1 cm for the 9 segmented ring. So now it's just a matter of cutting these pieces at the right angle to the right length. To make the cuts consistent and safe you could clamp a stop lock to your fence and reference off of there. But because I can pull my fence rail back I just use that as my reference. What comes now is pretty simple, just cutting and flipping. Oh, and if you don't want to see my hands being close to the blade, you should close your eyes now. So here are my two rings and the angles look pretty good, although they are not perfect. Here it's not a problem because I can glue each half together and then sand the surfaces parallel and then glue it together. But for the 9 segmented ring that's not possible because it's an odd number and I don't have an exact half of the circle. So what I want to do is to take this piece and tweak the angle until it fits the circle perfectly. And now the angles are perfect. Gluing is more or less straightforward. I shimmed between the halves to take care of the error in the angles. And here I have my fully glued up big ring and the two small 
ring halves, which don't fit together right now, but I'm about to fix that. Okay, so now here I have my bowl and here are the two rings that I now just need to glue on top. But in my opinion, gluing the rings together like this just wouldn't look right. There needs to be some kind of contrast between the rings, so I made another ring out of cherry that goes in between the two rings and that should look much better in the end. The meeting surfaces need to be flat and even, so that's what I'm taking care of here at the disc sander. With the ring centered I drew a circle with a sharpie which helps with the alignment. And after applying glue I tightened the pieces on the lathe with the tailstock and two pieces of plywood to spread the clamping force. After the glue dried I turned this ring round and true and then glued on the next ring with the same process as before. And now you really can sit back and enjoy the video. All the rings are glued on, so now let's switch on some music and turn the ball out of this. So the outside shape is pretty much done, but before I get started on the inside, I kind of don't like this rim here, because the exposed plywood here just doesn't look right as a rim, and it feels like there's just missing something that finishes or closes the bowl, if you know what I mean. So to fix that, I made another ring out of Vallaba, which in the end will kind of look like this, pretty dark. So now let's just glue it on and finish the turning. to say I'm really happy with how this turned out. The spectra plywood just looks amazing. Though it wasn't really that easy to turn and took me quite a while because the two minutes of edited video you just watched can't even come close to show the effort that went into this. For example, I spent about one hour just to get this curve here right. And in general it's really tough to turn Baltic birch plywood which the spectra plywood is because the glue layers between the plies are so hard and dulling the tool in no time, I think I had to resharpen my tool about 15 times just for this bowl here. But <laughs> worth the effort. Some of you probably also want to know what finish I used on this bowl and it's spray lacquer for a car, which is a really unusual finish for a bowl. But there is a good reason for this because the color of the spectra plywood is water-based. So I was afraid that when I use my regular wax finish that I would smear the colors around and it would kind of look bad in the end. Also during making and turning it I more and more realized how big this bowl would come out. So at one point I thought it would be even big enough for a salad bowl. 
And because salad is wet, I then decided to make the bowl waterproof. And then when I finally knew what I want the finish to be, I went to my local painting store, showed them the bowl and told them what I wanted. And they recommended me the spray lacquer. Because this is not water based, so the colors are safe. It doesn't stain the wood like a polyurethane would do. And it dries out extremely hard, so it should make it waterproof. And we can test it. Well, in my opinion, that's waterproof. Now the present is basically finished, but I can't give it to my sister like this or in a cardboard box. It wouldn't be right. So therefore I made a nice little wooden box in which the bowl fits. And the life chips actually make for a nice stuffing. And here it is, all finished and ready to make my sister happy. And I wish you a Merry Christmas. The maximum inner diameter, so everything... Well... Oops. Which is a really unusual bowl for a finish. No. And if you ever ask yourself in school, why? In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this. Yeah. In this video.